So good day, everyone. So welcome to Candy's Links to Learning. We're honored that you have joined us. I'm excited for our speakers today. Uh, we have Sydney. She's from New Brunswick. So, you know, I'm, I'm here in Edmonton and it's 10 a.m. and where she's joining from, it's 1 p.m. So we got some different time zones happening here. Uh, we have Carmel and we have Anita joining us this morning. So we're going to talk about or they're going to talk about certification. I think it, education and continuing education and professional development is really, really important, you know, as we get stronger as a people and as a community and as nations, education is really important. So this is a great discussion, great topic that we're going to have this day. I almost want to say this morning, but I got to remember some of you are joining us from across Turtle Island, so you're in a different time zone. So welcome, welcome. We give thanks to Creator for the gift of another day. I was actually thinking about breath and how that's a gift, that this air that we get to breathe, this land that we get to stand on, this community wherever you are that you're involved in and you're part of, and, and whatever family or chosen family and friends that you're a part of. It's all a gift from Creator. So we just come this morning with a good um, attitude of gratitude. So welcome, welcome. Join us that at this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are from, uh, as we discuss the requirements for CANDU's Technical and Professional Aboriginal Economic Development Certification. So this certification recognizes the educational and professional level of experience that all candidates enrolled in the process have. This level of recognition confirms the necessary skills and knowledge to fulfill the requirements of their position more effectively and supports their career paths in the field of Indigenous community economic development and related professional fields. So our guest speaker, she's going to share with us her wisdom, her story, her insight, uh, is Sydney Paul. Um, she is from King's Clear First Nations. She's a mother to a beautiful daughter named Slow Morningstar, beautiful name, her German shepherd, ranger, and partner to <laughs> Tyler. She graduated from the University of New Brunswick with a Bachelor of Business, Business Administration in 2015. After obtaining her BBA, she went on to continue to further her education and receive her master's certificate in project develop or project management from UNB Extended Learning. In addition to her studies at UNB, she also received her Technical Aboriginal Economic Development Certification or known as TAID, from the Council of the Advancement of Native Officers, so can do. Some of her work experience has been band management, pardon me, band manager and director of economic development for Kings Clear First Nation. She's now employed as the economic development officer for L Brown. You're gonna have to help me out, girl. First Not a lot next. <laughs> She enjoys, I love this, she enjoys CrossFit, being active and supporting um, the people, the Mi'kmaq people. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's Sydney. And then I am honored to also give some shout outs, some recognition to Carmel and Anita. So Carmel is joining us from Samson Cree Nation of Masquachis, Alberta. Carmel has a business administration accounting diploma from Nate. She previously, she was previously employed with Samson Cree Nation for the last four years where she was a dedicated employee in the residential de development department as a CMHC coordinator. She's very passionate about helping her nation and nation members by providing the best resources for programs available. So for the last two years, Carmel was the special projects coordinator where she oversaw the regional events before she transferred into the role of certification coordinator in the West. Carmel looks forward to having the opportunity to work with many accomplished indigenous economic development officers and land managers from across Canada. 
Working in this position, she has gained valuable work experience and enjoys networking with professionals in the field of economic development. We look forward to hearing from you, Carmel. And finally, Anita, she is from New Brunswick. I am going to let her tell us which Mi'kmaq nation she is from. She's a graduate from the University of New Brunswick where she earned a master's in adult education um, along with a Bachelor of Arts in Education degree. She holds a diploma in human resource management and recently became certified under the Canadian Career Development Foundation. Anita has extensive experience and skills in economic development, community development, Indigenous education and training, and women's issues. Anita facilitates training workshops across a range of topics, including career counseling, guiding circles, and community planning. So I just spent five minutes talking about how remarkable these women are. I feel I'm in the midst of um, well-educated, strong women. So we really look forward to hearing from you. Uh, so thank you for being here. I'm going to pass the reins off to you, Sydney. Okay, um, thank you. Um, that was a long-winded introduction for myself. But <laughs> um, so like she said, my name is Sydney Paul. Um, I am from Billich, so that's our traditional name, which is Kingsclair. Um, I'm a, I'm a Wollastoqua woman, which now working in a Mi'kmaq uh, territory, which it's an honor to be here. Um, so I have been employed since February as economic development officer for Natawatanek. And <clears throat> I, I enjoy, well, I've been doing economic development for probably about five years. And I've worked in a different array of, uh, I guess, capacities in my First Nation community. And I'm really excited to bring that experience to um, their community. Um, so I'll kind of talk a little bit why I became an EDO. Um, so when I started the University of New Brunswick, I didn't really know what my major was. So I attended a First Nation Youth Business Summit. Um, it was my first year of university and that's where I kind of fell in love with business. And then that's where I decided to major in business. And I knew I wanted to help um, Indigenous people. I just didn't know in what capacity. So I thought like, oh, business seems pretty good. Um, so from there, I went to University of New Brunswick. Um, I applied for a lot of, I won a lot of different scholarships and I won internships with a bank. Um, I also won actually a scholarship through CanDo back in 2011. And it was funny because I was uh, searching for us, uh, like I was just checking out your guys' website for a lot of different stuff. And I came across my, my picture and bio on, uh, on, this, on the scholarship. So that was pretty cool. And that was actually 10 years ago. So it's funny seeing how I, how much I wanted to do what I'm doing now today, it really come to fruition. So that was really awesome. Um, so I applied for the EDO position in Kingsclear um, and I was a successful candidate. So from there, I got to uh, take part in a lot of very exciting um, opportunities for the community. I got to be a part of the growth of our um, expansion of our uh, our gas bar, which is probably um, one of the top ranked uh, revenue generating in the province. Um, so we're along Route 102 in Kingsclair. Um, I got to be a part of uh, putting a coffee shop in our community along with a pizza place. Um, so we partnered with a different franchise. Um, I got to be a part of um, our expansion project for our Willistic Lounge. So it's a gaming through Atlantic Lottery Corporation. So we moved from being inside the community to moving up to uh, a very, like a busy uh, highway. Um, so those are, those are really exciting to see those projects. And then I think that's how uh, we got recognized to be nominated. Um, for the Community Development Award for CANDU um, for, in 2019. Actually, uh, Stanley Barnaby, which I know he, I think he's a board member for CANDU, he actually nominated uh, Kingsclare First Nation um, for the award. Um, and we were one of the two finalists, which was really awesome. Um, even though we weren't the successful uh, commu uh, community to win, we still got a lot of national recognition, which was 
a, a really honor because we had so many people like reach out to like us to try to partner a lot of different projects and um, having that national recognition really kind of uh, show that we're we're in it to like to for business so we're in it to grow and we're in it to develop partnerships with different Indigenous communities um, and then being with the community of Kingsclair we've had the honor of being able to uh, share a lot of best practices with a lot of the stuff that we've created for our economic development and a lot of uh, a lot of work that we've done in the community and it uh, feels great to be a part of that process. Um, and then when I did my uh, my TAID, which I'm in the process of actually working on my PAID with uh, Anita. Um, so I received that when I graduated from uh, UMB and I found that to be a good stepping stone for um, me in a sense that I was able to take part in a lot of networking events. So I met a lot of different EDOs, even in the Atlantic region, um, but also nationally where I was able to like reach out to them and kind of develop that working relationship because a, a lot of communities are at different levels of uh, development. So they were, a lot of them kind of like shared some stuff, especially starting new in um, economic development, um, which now I have a solid uh, networking base. And I found that the tape kind of helped me because you guys put on a lot of like, like social networking events, you guys put on like education uh, um, events that kind of help sharpen in like your skills and for your day to day uh, activities and work. And just kind of looking at um, for the people just kind of like ask what that is, because like I have it in my signature. Um, in my email and people kind of just ask. So I kind of just kind of talk about can do a little bit. So it's kind of uh, providing like a free marketing for you guys as well. <laughs> so that's, um, I guess a little bit about that. Um, I know like some of the stuff that Anita asked was like talking about like challenges and successes in this position because it's, it, 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 it comes with a lot of challenges. Um, so some of the things that I find that uh, that have been kind of barriers, I guess, um, to being uh, fully successful in this position is um, having the ability to invest OSR, which is own source revenue, um, in like project development. Not a lot of communities have that allocated just for economic development because we're they're so focused on funding. So the little OSR that they do generate, they're so focused on putting it towards social programs that are um, underfunded by the government, um, recreation, um, infrastructure, or like elder subsidies. Um, so those are the big things that I seem to be a, a lot of focus for our leadership for communities on how they reallocate uh, OSR. Um, and I guess the accessibility of different funding grants um, because of the, some of the requirements and stuff uh, it may not fit in for like the community that's applying for that. Um, the biggest thing is how guidelines change year to year on the same funding that you apply for, which tends to be frustrating. Um, so I guess just keep it on top of all those changes in the, I guess, um, the funding grants. Um, and the biggest thing too I noticed is I'm trying to figure out like a separation between politics and business. Um, something that we created in Kingsclair is we had uh, a corporation which kind of overseen, I guess, uh, like our businesses in the community and kind of had like, um, I guess kind of almost like creating a separation between uh, because leadership have a million things on their plate and um, I guess having that the business person dealing with the business uh, side of uh, the community um, tends to make a, a stronger uh, economy in the community. Um, what else is there? So some of the struggles too is a uh, regulatory board. So dealing with jurisdictional issues in First Nation communities. And in New Brunswick, we work in a climate of a conservative government and it's very, uh, how they deal with stuff is very archaic. So that has come a level of frustration too when trying to push certain projects or trying to negotiate different agreements with the province. Um, 
So that's something that I guess it's an ongoing basis working um, at leadership level and politicians and something that's out of my pay grade, I guess. <laughs> um, and then a lot of the successes is actually seeing a project um, be completed, so going from all those challenges you go from starting a project to actually seeing something completed which is is a very uh it's a it's a good feeling to kind of um see that you like you started that and then it's actually succeeding and it's working and all that um and one of the things too is like being in this position and doing all the networking is creating those strong working relationships with departments that actually want to work with first nations like even though we have an overall arch and conservative government, I still have a lot of work in good working relationships with a lot of different levels of uh, departments in the government. So that that has come to be beneficial. Um, and uh, what was kind of cool was like, since we worked on our, um, like our gas bar, which we expanded, um, we were nominated for the award for, um, for the Only Wig Entrepreneurship Award. Um, and um, in 2020, and we were the successful candidate, so we got we got an award for that. So that was pretty cool. Um, and just like seeing stuff like that is it's really uh, and seeing the communities grow and flourish. And I really am, like I'm a strong, firm believer that in order to have a, a strong, healthy community, you need to have a strong economy, like you need to have the ability to generate revenue so you can fund all those programs that aren't funded through provincial and federal government and I and and to see it actually uh work too like seeing programs like being up and run because it was a community uh led project and there's more I guess more um pride in it they take more pride so that's pretty uh I found that to be um really great to be a part of um I feel like I'm kind of rambling on so I don't know if you guys want to question or stop me <laughs> no, uh, well that was that was great what a great story to start the beginning of my day um <laughs> you know it's just, just hearing from where you started to where you are now it's such an inspiration and you're such a huge role model so thank you thank you so much for sharing yes. yeah um so i'm i'm calling in from how was they calling in when it's signing on <laughs> Signing on from Muscatese, Treaty 6, just south of Edmonton. And I'm going to um, start our PowerPoint presentation and then we'll talk more about the tape um, process that you and Anita went through in a bit. Oopsies. Give me a quick second here. Here we go. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Michelle has introduced, my name is Carmel Nipus, and I am the certification coordinator for CANDU, and I oversee the Western region. That's from Manitoba West and the Northwest Territories and the Yukon. Um, so for those of you that don't know, CANDU is a national indigenous organization involved in community economic development. We build capacity which strengthens indigenous eco economies by providing programs and services to economic development officers and land managers and also other people in related fields. Um, and then I'm just gonna let Anita take over the day hey. process. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, zooming in from New Brunswick and um, happy for another day. It's beautiful here. Um, the Aboriginal Economic Developer Certification Program through CANDU is, is, is based on showing or proven competency in 11 key areas. Now these key areas are paramount or fundamental to the job of the economic developer in the community. We uh, arrived at these 11 competencies through consultation with EDOs in the field and uh, uh, with them and our education uh, team, we, have, we came up with these core 11 competencies. So, I will just read them out and uh, we can do a little bit of talking about, about how you 
obtain your certification with them. So we have Aboriginal law and policies. The second is organization and financial management, governance and leadership, economics, sustainable environment and land stewardship, lands and resource management, project management, community planning and development, community-based economic development, contemporary Aboriginal economic development, and finally, Aboriginal business development and entrepreneurship. Uh, so our technician level, which is the first level of certification, uh, can be obtained uh, in two ways that uh, Carmel will discuss shortly. Okay, so there's two ways to obtain your TAID certification. The first way is to be a graduate from one of our seven accredited institutions, um, institution programs across the country. Um, the, the second way is to apply for a prior learning assessment review, PLAR. And this is a matchup between your post-secondary education and your work experience to the previous mentioned 11 competencies. So we'll ask applicants to submit their resumes and their post-secondary uh, transcripts and also any other like training that you think is relevant towards indigenous ec economic, I'm sorry, economic development or business. Um, and your TAID is valid for four years and you must renew it thereafter. And the process of renewing is you have to um, continue with your um, professional development. So you could do that by taking courses that are relevant to business or attending one of our many events. Uh, we have our national conference, our annual national conference or our regional events. So that would be like the links to learning that you're attending now. So our accredited programs as Carmel mentioned in the last slide are programs at various colleges and universities across the country that are directly aligned with CANDU's economic development uh, uh, TAID level certification. Uh, so what this means is that by virtue of your graduation from any of these programs, you simultaneously earn your TAED or your TAID level certification. Uh, there would be no other transcript review required or, uh, or uh, any other courses uh, to obtain your TAID. So uh, the programs across the country, beginning with uh, Brit in British Columbia, we have NBIT. Their program that's aligned with us is the Aboriginal Community Economic Development or ACED Diploma Program. We also have a university in Ontario that's aligned with us, and that is Algoma University, and they have their Community Economic and Social Development Diploma and Degree Program, the CESD. We are also uh, in partnership or aligned with the with Aurora College in the NWT through their Business Administration Program, Community Economic Development Stream Diploma Program. Also through uh, Cape Breton University in Nova Scotia, the Masters of Business Administration in Community Economic Development or an MBA in CED Diploma Degree and Masters Program. The University of Lethbridge offers Indigenous Governance and Business Management Certificate post diploma or degree program. And uh, in Manitoba, we one of our accredited institutions uh, there, is the University College of the North, and they have the Community Economic Development Diploma Program. And finally, in Manitoba as well, at the University of Winnipeg, we have the Masters in Development Practice Indigenous Development Program. So you can see that um, we have a wide variety of programs at the um, diploma, um, degree level and even at the master's level. So once again, by virtue of completing any of these programs, you earn your TAED, uh, but uh, don't be discouraged if you're not in any of these programs, you can do a prior learning assessment with us where we would look at your transcripts from any other university post-secondary program and review your resume and undertake a prior learning uh, 
uh, I guess you would call it a prior learning uh, activity with you and um, you can possibly earn your TAED that way. Yeah, so I was um, K certified uh, over a year ago and Anita did my uh, prior learning assessment review and I attended um, Nate. So a lot of my courses related to the 11 competencies. And I just wanted to let people know that um, sometimes it takes more than one course just to fill one of those competencies. I like to use the economics uh, competency as a example. So during the first year of my business course, uh, we had to take micro and macro. So you needed both of those courses just to fill the one competency. We also have organizational and professional management so to fill no and financial management so to fill that one you know my um organizational behavior course and my intro into finance course filled that competency so um when we are working with our accredited institutions and we're vetting new ones to join our program we also have uh, when they're submitting their courses to just try and make it more accessible for students that are in whatever program they are in. Um, it's like a multiple of classes could meet those competencies. So these are just the logos for those seven accredited institutions that we partner with. And then I'm gonna pass it over to Anita to go over paid. Sure. So uh, building on the technician level or the TAED uh, is our paid or professional Aboriginal economic development level. Uh, to obtain your paid, you must have your TAID certificate already. And uh, you should have at least five years of experience in Aboriginal economic development or Indigenous economic development and uh, attend a combination of, of any two uh, of the CANDU conference, a CANDU professional training course or a CANDU accredited training course. I obtained my PAED or my PAID uh, quite a few years ago. I was a practicing EDO uh, from my from a small Mi'kmaq community uh, called Metabanagia, which is actually just uh, 15 minutes heading west up the road, as they say in the Brownswick, just down the road, up the road. Um, and uh, we obtained our certification through the course by course route in Atlantic Canada. We had a, a large group of EDOs from the entire Atlantic region, including Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland. We uh, took courses or competencies, uh, courses to satisfy the competencies, I'll put it that way, uh, on a regular basis for about two years or maybe into the third year even. Uh, so we would all gather in a central location such as Halifax, Nova Scotia or Moncton, New Brunswick, and we would have a, a trainer um, from one of our institutions on site and they would deliver a course such as Aboriginal law and policy. So. A number of us obtained our certification that way. Um, and a few others uh, uh, had a number of courses already completed, which uh, satisfied some of the competencies and through that process and, and doing some prior learning with them because of the nature of the work that they do, we were able to get pretty much everybody in Atlantic Canada certified. Uh, I then went on uh, to obtain my paid because I had been working in the community as an EDO at that point for over five years. And I was a, you know, a, a great supporter of CANDU, uh, attending my first conference uh, in Fredericton way back when, uh, been taking training of course and other workshops. Um, and I applied for my paid so there is, a, you know, every situation is different with each um, eligible candidate and Carmel and I work very closely with you. If you are pursuing either of these and guide you along the way, uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. And we have uh, can do certified EDOs right across the country from east to west to north. And uh, uh, we're, 
we're here to to be your your uh, first point of contact with certification to lead you through the process. So I just wanted to go over scholarships uh, really quickly. Um, so for those of you who are attending post-secondary education, um, back in 2020, uh, Candy partnered with CIBC and Inspire to offer um, scholarships in uh, from anywhere from a diploma program up to a master's program. So they do vary depending on the program that you are in. And to be eligible, you do have to be First Nations, Inuit or Métis, and also be in the field of economic development or business. And then of course, at Candu's annual scholarship from our NEF fund um, for $2,000 each is awarded to four recipients. And the deadline is July 31st, 2021, not 2020. Um, so every year we um, host an economic development youth summit and uh, the first couple of years it was in person due to COVID it is now uh, virtual and um, the we invite 52 youth from across the country to attend and partake into intro level into indigenous community economic development and lands management and also entrepreneurship and after their week of participating in these sessions they obtain three course credits from Nickel Valley Institute of Technology and um, in intro to economic development indigenous economic development and that goes towards your TAID and it could also go to the program that you're in uh, we cannot guarantee that your institution will take those credits, but um, it's a good chance that they will. We've never had any issues. I haven't personally heard of any for the credits being transferable. Um, so at the end of this week, the, the delegates um, have to present their case study. So this is kind of like in, um, to feel like their final kind of test. And here is our contact information. If you are interested in reaching out to us, um, if you have any questions about the programs that we offer, our TAID or paid certification or training courses that are coming up, yes, please feel free to reach out to us. Awesome. So thank you, uh, Carmel and Anita, for letting us know some of the, the steps that perhaps need to be taken. Um, so we're talking about two certifications here. Um, and Sydney, I want to say what an inspiration that you are and all the good things that you're doing in the community. Um, one thing I really, there was actually a lot of things I appreciated what you said, but I, I wrote a couple of them down. I really appreciated you saying the separation between um, politics and business. I think that that's so important because sometimes it does get intertwined and then miscommunication, um, stalled projects. So I really appreciate that, that word. I really also liked strong, healthy communities and also healthy economies. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about um, success, a success story within your community. I mean, you already talked about 2020, you guys won this award, so props to you, but could maybe you flesh out, highlight a story of success in your community? Um, yeah, well, like I'm in a, I'm in a new community now, so I just started out. Um, I can give previous stuff, but I've been successful in applying for a whole bunch of funding since I started in Eel Ground, but um, so some of the, I guess, uh, the success project is, um, I guess, moving our gaming, um, because our gaming was just in a little building right beside our band office, right in the, like, in the middle, like, in the heart of our community, which had minimal traffic. Um, so what we did is we moved that along Route 102. So it's right beside our, um, our gas bar, which is pretty successful. Um, and then seeing like our people being employed and seeing the, like the turnaround of, uh, like revenue from that project, um, that has been pretty, uh, it's been pretty awesome to see. And, um, I love seeing like when we, um, like when there's revenue generated and how it's reinvested in the community and, um, the chief and council have been pretty good with, uh, doing very, uh, they're very open on their process from start to finish on stuff. So we did a lot of engagement with the community. 
um, and then kind of let the community know like where we put the money and like once we get mo- like revenue from the businesses, how we reinvest it and where we put direct it towards. So I guess seeing a project start and then seeing it succeed, I guess, is pretty much like a success story for me. Awesome. And I love how you continuously had talked about community, how this is about the community. This is about community engagement, involvement, uh, making sure that the community is informed, even consulting the community. And so I think that that's really, really important. And even in that, in and of itself, that is a success, just getting that community um, really involved in, in those ways. So yeah. You. So yeah. you have your TAID certification, but now you're working towards the paid one? Yes. Yeah, so I actually reached out to Anita. So I have to get my unofficial transcripts. I think that's the only thing that's holding me back right now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, so I guess a question for all of you, the process. So if somebody wants to do this, but say they have an already busy life, but this would just really supplement, this would really um, what complement what they're doing, but maybe don't have a lot of time. Can you kind of take it at your own pace? Oh, yes, of course. So we're very open to uh, working around your schedule. And also, um, it, you know, we have a lot of students applying for their Tate as well. And I know when you're a student to, like myself, you know, living on that noodle diet. <laughs> and so I didn't have a lot of funds just to apply for your Tate application. So um, I just want to mention that when you do apply the assessment review and everything, you are not charged a fee until you are approved. Right. So after after we go through the assessment and match you up to the competencies, and then we send it to our education committee for review to approve, um, then you will be granted your TAID, like mm-hmm. charged a fee, yeah. Awesome, so, um, so really the process starts with just having a conversation, just having a dialogue with either you, Carmel, or you, Anita, just to to get that ball rolling. So if you're even just thinking about the certification, if there's even like, you know, if your heart just beat a little bit faster when you're hearing about this, like begin that conversation. Um, Sometimes we go down that trail of what if, or maybe I'm not ready, or I don't have time. Um, But I'd say just go and start at least that conversation Mm because you never know. Awesome. Um, Um, I'm sorry. So Anita, you had, um, did you want to just uh, go over the fees? Yes. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. For my, my video has just froze. So I wasn't sure. Okay. The fees for your, your TAID or your technical level. Uh, and again, we don't charge you until we've worked with you through the process and you've been granted your TAID. It's $149 plus the pick applicable, um, uh, GST or HST, depending on which region or province you're in. Um, it's not a lot of money. I know it can be when you're a student, as Carmel said. Uh, If we have to take you through an extensive prior learning assessment uh, or a PLAR, there's an additional $75 fee for that. But uh, that $149 uh, registration fee for Tate includes your CANDU membership, the transcript review that we do, and a CANDU publication. So there's a few... uh, little perks thrown in there as well. So you automatically become a CANDU member, which uh, is a is a great uh, benefit for you going forward. And I also just wanted to highlight that the, the amount of benefits and resources available to you once you do become like Tate certified or even just join the CANDU family as a member, it's just so rewarding and um, the networking opportunities that are available. As you've heard from like Sydney, who started off as one of our scholarship recipients to being a TAID certified, to being a, a runner for, was it um, EDO of the year or um, community? Finalist. Community. Yeah, finalist. And like that was over a 10 year span and yeah. One of our um, um, our success stories. <laughs> success right here. Uh, so 
um, can do membership. So what's the process? And so say if you're not ready to even commit to certification at this point, like what would the benefit be to have a can do membership? Sure, I, I can go over that. Uh, you're welcome to become a can do member at any time. Uh, the full membership costs $105 a year, and that includes your GST. So the full membership uh, is open to individuals who function as EDO people or personnel rather within their communities or organized Indigenous organizations. Full members uh, enjoy all the benefits of CANDU membership and have full voting privileges at our annual uh, our AGA. And those usually take place at the CANDU conference. So the members get to vote on various uh, issues and concerns and that helps guide CANDU as a, as a organization. Uh, the other option for membership is uh, open to companies and organizations, agencies, associations, post-secondary institutions, and other groups that support can do as goals and objectives. And uh, this is the organization membership category. And uh, corporate members, however, do not have voting privileges at our uh, at our AGA, but they enjoy other CANDU uh, membership privileges. And uh, we charge $315 plus applicable GST. Oh, I'm sorry, includes the applicable GST. Uh, you can also be an associate member for $89.25. Associate members are individuals who support CANDU's goals and objectives and are interested in keeping abreast of activities. So they're not you know, this is just something that helps them in their knowledge and, and to understand uh, what's happening in economic development. Uh, they do not as well have voting privileges at the AGA, but they do enjoy other benefits. We have a student membership, which is our most um, uh, economical uh, membership, and it's open to students uh, who are full or part-time. And uh, as long as they're enrolled in a field that's linked to economic development, such as uh, business admin, economics, business finance, business management, natural resources, community economic development. So, uh, and that's very affordable at $26.25 per year. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's very um, accessible. Um, one of the goals of Can Do, of course, is to make our programming accessible, relevant, um, and cost, you know, cost effective. So there are certain subscriptions and certain uh, benefits that are part of the Can Do membership package, uh, such as a discount to our Journal of uh, Aboriginal Economic Development, which is our academic journal. Uh, it's a wonderful journal for students and others who are studying who are looking at case studies, who are looking to see what uh, other communities across the country are doing. Uh, also research, of course. Um, we usually feature our winners of the various business and uh, community economic development categories there. Um, and there's Can Do eConnect uh, News, which is uh, online connect. We have the Can Do Connect magazine. And you also get a discount registration at the uh, National Conference in AGA. So lots of benefits and um, we look forward to, you know, uh, seeing more members come aboard and um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. I, I hadn't realized you had um, a range of options that you could choose from underneath that banner of um, membership. So thank you so much for highlighting those. I kind of have my eye on that associate membership piece. So thank you. Um, well, I appreciate your time, ladies, for um, just coming to share, particularly Sydney, what's going on in your world and your community. Um, it was absolutely inspiring to hear about the growth and the evolution and the transition um, that you have taken within your own professional career. So such an inspiration. So thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for being here and lending us your time. And Carmel and Anita, um, you know, anyone who gets to work with you is um, so 
privileged, so honored. So thank you for sharing what you do within this amazing organization that is called Can Do. Um, you know, if anybody, you know, has any questions or has an inkling of thinking about this certification, reach out to these ladies. Um, their emails are will be on the website, I believe. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So reach out, begin that conversation. I, I've said this the other day that anything great that has happened really begins with that conversation, that dialogue, that thought. So go and run with that thought and that dialogue. Um, you know, I feel like what you know when we are a strong people, we have um, yes, strong relations, but we also have strong professional development. We have a strong educational background. We're continuing on this journey that it's, and that's what I like about you, Sydney, like it's ongoing. You never stopped. You continued this educational journey and your professional development. So continue to pursue, you know, the, those higher educational goals um, because that's what makes our community strong. So Thank you so much for everyone being here. We are honored by this moment that we got to share together. Um, Danielle, do you have any thoughts, any words? I just wanted to say hi. Um, oops. <laughs> um, just a question. <laughs> My arm moved against the table, but anyway, just a question. So if you're going for the paid one, what documents would you like um, suggest they have in place or kind of set up prior to like reaching out to you? Uh, so just just to um, go back to what we were saying, to, prior to being paid certified, you do have to be TAID certified. Sorry, okay. TAID. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, um, okay. So for you, for example, um, I would just ask for your post-secondary transcripts. They can be your unofficial ones. So you don't have to go and apply and pay for those. And so just re-log in and just email them to me and also just your resume and any other training you've taken like you're taking your project management um, certification, like uh, our events planner one, like just bring those all to me and I'm sure we can fill that in. And I know um, two of the competencies that are kind of just a little challenging to fill, but still still possible are the lands ones because without, without lands management, there would not be economic development. They go hand in hand. So, uh, for you, I'm not sure if you do have any experience in the lands field. I know for me, it was kind of the way I was able to fill it was um, working in housing and working on those projects. And with your like working on the I high projects, like you have a lot of work experience there. And also when we did the youth summit and we worked on the lands activity and working with those lands managers. So the more detail you give us, the it's easier for us to fill those competencies. Okay, yeah. thank you. Awesome, so any final thoughts, final questions before we close this session? I guess um, one question that maybe others would have and even for myself. So once I submit the documents, how long is the process until it's approved or whatever the case is? It, uh, it can be pretty quick um, because there's two of us working on certification for the country. So, uh, you know, they're processed as quickly as I receive them. I undertake the review and, um, you know, it's, it's just a matter of locating all the course descriptions that are on your transcript. And those are usually very easily accessible online. So I go through that process. Uh, if there's any gaps, then I look at your resume and I see what you have done in the world of work and uh, match, do some matchups there. I may ask you for some additional information uh, and then when I feel that um, you have met the 11 competencies, I send that out to our uh, education committee. So we have uh, a larger education committee that oversees our work. And uh, they are partners with the, for the most part, in our accredited institutions. 
the, uh, I shouldn't say our education committee, our certification committee, they review uh, my work or Carmel's work and they either uh, approve the recommendation or they'll, they'll ask for additional, uh, additional work on the candidate's part. So it can happen very fast. I'll give you one example. Last week I received um, uh, a, a particular candidate's file and uh, it was able to get it out the next day because everything was very straightforward. My committee was, uh, must have been sitting around waiting for something to come into their inbox. They did the reviews. <laughs> they told me the next day that they agreed with my recommendation. And the following day, I told her via email that she was approved. She was super excited and uh, actually be sending uh, her bio and pic uh, that I received in the mail today from her. Uh, so it happened, it can happen very fast. And it just depends on how quickly the candidate is able to respond to our request as well. Um, COVID has been both good and bad in that regard. You know, we're, we get to work from home, uh, but there's a lot of distractions and there's a lot of other things that we're concerned with with COVID. So people are in their offices, maybe don't have access to their laptop or whatever the case may be. So yeah, it's just however, uh, you know, we, we do our end as quickly as possible so we can do it quickly. Yeah, I just I really want to just like I give a shout out to Anita. I really appreciate you picking up the the slack when I'm a little overwhelmed with other projects. And um, mm -hmm. it just, she just compliments me so well. And I just like, you know, it's a great partnership, even presenting with you. It's just been really oh. throw you the ball. <laughs> Thank you, Carmel. It's great to work with you, too. That's awesome. I guess you did kind of cover my last question. Just curious about COVID and with the work online, if there's an increase in applicants or if you've noticed any kind of change there? Uh, I can start with that. And then Carmel, if you have anything to add, we have a, I guess I have a recent good example with, uh, uh, with training. Um, we have uh, a project currently initiated with uh, Jedi New Brunswick, and they would like to see their EDOs um, trained again. So these are the newer EDOs that are uh, in the field now. And I kind of put Sydney in that group somewhat because uh, she she is a younger EDO, and uh, you know we have these dynamic EDOs across our region. Um, so Jedi would like to make sure that all of the EDOs in New Brunswick are certified. So we're beginning a new project with them to offer the training and um, it'll all be via Zoom because of COVID. So we have a bit of a resurgence there of interest in training, which is exciting. I'm really happy to be working on that with you, Danielle and Carmel and whoever else at the can do office. So we'll be, hopefully starting one of the competency courses uh, in May. And we'll have a couple more this year and uh, we'll try to get as many of the EDOs uh, up to par on their training needs. And uh, people like myself who have been out of, out of the immediate work of an EDO will probably be very interested in those courses as well because it's good for my ongoing professional development. So I can use those courses to renew my paid uh, because that's what paid's all about, right? Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, just to um, support what Anita said, like when COVID first hit, it was so slow and everybody's priorities were more focused on their health and mental well being and their families. And uh, most communities, like my own, were in like a state of emergency. So we could not like blame anyone at all for, you know, refocusing. Um, but now with everything switching to being online and virtual and um, just the follow-up with other participants who are attending on our online sessions. Um, yeah, like she said, it's been a resurgence and it's been, we're making it more accessible to have your Kate because before when we'd have our regional events, it would only be accessible to those people in that specific region. But now that it's open Canada wide, so we get, people from East Coast, West Coast, you know, Northern applying to be in this one course to fill one of their competencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now that was my other question too, because this is, um, we have the two 
webinars, this one and Thursdays, and they're essentially different regions focused, regional focused. But you kind of just answered that. So it's open to national. So it doesn't matter which region you are in, you can apply, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. And then, like you said, the courses that you offer, those are, if anyone's interested in like um, pursuing the Tater Paid and they need one of the courses to fill that in, um, where would they find that in for, or is that updated regularly? Um, so on our website, I do try to um, work closer with our marketing um, representative and uh, just to keep it updated what we're offering and then also through our social media pages and our newsletters, just um, sharing that information and then also just connecting with individuals who we know are applying for their CAID and they're missing those specific competencies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's all questions for me. Thanks, ladies. <laughs> Those are some great questions, Danielle. Um, yeah. Uh, Could I just add uh, one more thing? Uh, can, all of CANDU's training courses under the TAIDE are university credit courses. So they are transferable into degree programs. Uh, you know, I think at most institutions that will accept them. I know I use some in my undergraduate degree. Uh, so they're not just, um, uh, uh, you know, a certificate for training for the sake of training. They are bona fide credit, which is, you know, usable for you and laterable into a degree. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, you covered a lot of ground in the last hour. So thank you so much. You walked us through um, the certification, walked us through what are some of the steps. And then Danielle asked some really good questions um, about the process of even, you know, um, applying for that certification. So thank you for sharing um, what you do. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Uh, thank you for being the powerhouses that you are in your respected <laughs> fields. I feel so honored and feel so privileged to have been with you in the last hour. So thank you. Um, as we go on with our day, may we carry, you know, love in our hearts. May we carry, you know, kindness in our thinking, especially to ourselves and to the world around us. And may we just walk gently and lightly on this beautiful land that the creator has given to us. So be well. Um, thank you for being here. I hi. Hi. Everybody. Love you.